Hello, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to continue the data representation. We are going to discuss how to represent multimedia data using binary. In the previous videos, we have discussed how to represent numbers and how to do the arithmetic calculations in using binary. And from this video, we're going to talk about how to represent multimedia data like text, audio, image, and video. And we're also going to study how to do the data compression. Human can get information from different type of media, like vision, hearing, touch, and taste. Of course, vision can get you much more information compared with taste. Psychology study shows that uh, during the interaction, information is expressed 7% in words and 38% in tone and 55% in vision. So it is very important for the computer to represent multimedia in order to show the people more information. For the multimedia data, we have different data types. We have text, digit, images, audio, and video. This is a very interesting video. Um, showing that uh, a research in 2009 tried to bring the human at the sixth sense by using some small devices like cameras and a small protector. So you can check out this video in the course system. The very basic type of media probably will be the text. So people can read the text to get much information. So it is very important for the computers to represent text. So how do we represent text using binary? because in binary, we only have 0 and 1. So how are we going to use 0 and 1 to represent different characters in the text? It's actually quite easy to represent characters if we can give each of the characters a different number. For example, we have character A, B, C. So if we use like 1, 0 to represent A, maybe like 1, 1 to represent B, and then Maybe we use 100 zero zero to represent C. So in this case, we can give each of the characters a different code. So if we have limited number of characters, so it will be easy for us to represent all of the characters by using binary. So this type of approach has been widely used in the computer system. So we use the ASCII code to represent English characters and some control characters also. So the ASCII is short for America Standard Code for Information Interchange. So it is designed to interchange the information between different systems. Because if the different systems use the same kind of coding standard, they can understand each other. So the ASCII code is a coding scheme using seven or eight bits that assigns numerals, punctuation marks, control characters, and other symbols. It was developed in 1968 to standardize the data transmission among disparate hardware and software systems and is built into almost all computers. So nowadays, we're still using the ASCII code to represent the characters. So this is the ASCII code. Originally, ASCII code used 7 bits to represent 128 different characters. Later on, it is extended to 8 bits to represent 256 different characters. So this table is the 7-bit ASCII code. The first column shows you the left 3 bits. The top row shows you the right 4 bits. For example, the ASCII code for the control character now is 000 and 0000, which is 7 zeros. And the ASCII code for text 1 it is 0110001. So remember, this is not a number. This is a text. So it's different from the number 1. And the ASCII code for upper J is 100 and 1010. So it is quite easy to check the ASCII code for these characters. You can actually use some editors to verify that the system used the binary to represent text. So suppose you have a text file, you can use this Notepad++ to open the text file and show the hexadecimal representation of the file. 
we can check the hexadecimal number of each of the characters. For example, the code for this blank is 20. So 20, if you check the ASCII code, is 010, which is 2, and 000, which is 0. So the ASCII code for the blank is 20. And then if you check the 69, so 6 is 110, and 9 is 1001. So 69 will be this character, which is I. So if you check in the text file, the character after blank is actually I. So another type of coding standard is called Unicode, because ASCII code is 8 bits. So it can only represent 256 characters. Of course, it's not enough. So we are going to use 16 bits. So if we use 16 bits, we can represent this number of characters. So this will be enough for all languages used worldwide. And Unicode is a superset of ASCII code, meaning that the first 256 characters in the Unicode is exactly the same as the characters in the ASCII code. So this shows you some of the Unicode. For example, character A is an English letter, and we use 41 to represent this character in ASCII code. And in the Unicode, because we use 16 bits, so it will be four hexadecimal numbers. The first two hexadecimal numbers will not be used to represent the ASCII code. So we can just set them to zero. So 0041 is the Unicode number of the character A. And the next one is the Russian character. And the, the Unicode for this character is 042F. You can also represent different languages like Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and different symbols. So this is how we represent text by using binary. We just different different type of coding standards. So except the ASCII code, Unicode, nowadays we also use a kind of code called the UTF code. So this is widely used coding standard in the internet.